Ravenlock is a game where being attacked by a clockwork cyberpunk flavor flave of a bird that shoots out flaming swords at you and isn't the craziest thing you're going to see, or maybe even the third craziest. It's coming soon from the creators of the stunning Riverbond and Echo Generation. It brings players into a mystical world of magic and adventure and action and themselves being directly shot into an Alice in Wonderland-like world, a third-person action-adventure game. This is the finale of the developer's voxel art series. Here are my impressions with the game so far. Subscribe if you want to see day one reviews, jump into the podcast with us on Fridays, or know about the latest news, all with no BS. And as always, I buy a copy of any single game that I get from a dev and give away a code, so my money is on the line just like yours. Now, from the start of the game, with Mira moving into a new home and her parents finding a portal to another world, you can instantly see that the developers are doing a particular thing. They're locking the player into the excited focal point of a young kid, bouncing from small moment to small moment, from petting a dog to investigating a barn and then getting shot off into a Minecraft-like mixed world with Alice in Wonderland as its main inspiration, where evil reigns supreme in the form of despotic queen and you come into contact with this magic mirror, and it's your job to take that queen out. Exploring locations connected via other locations is a quick and dirty quest system that drives you consistently forward. The two work somewhat in concert. It has you collecting items for those in the game world fighting off evildoers and meeting characters within the game world that you end up helping. Now, even now, it's easy to notice just how Ravenlock skews younger, especially in the starting areas. A demographic area of effect attack, if you will, directly at the pre teens and the teens. It's quest setups, it's sounds, even the specific quests themselves and the rewards and reasonings are all in a slightly younger demographic format than you may be expecting. Ravenlock is a good entry for younger gamers. Attacking and fighting enemies using the sword and special attack powers you unlock later though, it almost seems like this starts to move a little bit forward. In the game, it branches out to some insanely good looking boss battles and world exploration. And, and while the game was never difficult, the game's first couple hours truly are a tutorial area versus a reflection of things to come, especially in the activities that you'll need to do and in some of the fights. Ravenlock, though, is all about exploring, taking on arena-style boss battles, and it lets you upgrade new weapons and equipment and powers as you go. First of all, I love the look of the game. Like the prior titles from the developer, the world is filtered through this detailed Minecraft voxel look. All blocks and squares and angular characters look just askew enough to be able to cut you, and it gives the odd Wonderland feel something completely different than other games that have tried to do that Wonderland feel. From shivering hedgehog store owners to creepy waddling mushrooms that thunder through environments and then leap into what can only be be described as like a boys and girls club level football tackle to hit you. While new locations unveil new enemies, each one looks fantastical. Even the laid-back village center with its dancing cauldron and witch's home. It does lean towards a game world that is less dark than, say, American McGee's Alice, though I've seen that comparison thrown around. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some incredible-looking moments and a couple that are a little bit darker than others. The game also has a tendency to show you the next location as you go to it from a lookout or some other means, and those moments are fantastic and give you an idea of scale that that we don't see in a lot of other games. Warped voxel versions of Queen of Hearts castles with their mazes to witches huts boiling trouble in a cauldron of bubbles. There's almost something here every couple minutes to engage the eye especially if you understand where Ravenlock is headed and what it's trying to hit. As the last game in the Voxel trilogy, Ravenlock hits that specific note that you expect that the prior games did as well. Well, I'm not sure just what age of gamers are going to be leaping into this, just be aware that again, it does skew younger, especially in what's reflected in the difficulty that at first, I would have to be super generous if I called it laid back. Swinging weapons, snicker snacking enemies with no hesitation, unleashing a freeze bomb into a boss's face doesn't really challenge that much, but it's a peaceful, almost zen-like feel to it, moving from one spot to the other, figuring out one more mini quest, and then exploring and talking to different characters. But understanding how the game is going to work is no better demonstrated than when you attack an enemy with an item from your inventory and the world freezes, giving you whatever amount of time that you may need. And if you're being attacked in a battle, really, it doesn't matter matter. You can slow down time and decide, is this a hill I want to die on and what do I want to use? You can always take a moment whenever you want to. Audibly, the game has a number of facets that I find both excellent and a bit at odds with each other. For example, the music is good, amazing piano solos, and this somewhat reverberish main theme with a harp and a piano playing against each other, that is excellent, and it's mimicked throughout a lot of the game's locations. 
However, most likely due to cost, Ravenlock doesn't have any voice work. And I do feel that in a weird way that hurts the presentation, especially as the game's wild characters, weird creatures, and likable main characters that you end up experiencing feel like they're lacking in impact because of the voices, especially when you see some massive nature spirit statue and his voice is just beeps and words that pop up on the screen. And you sort of imagine in your head what somebody could have done and put some voices in there and just what this character would sound like. Also, while the sound effects themselves are passable, things like weapon attacks and hits do not change up very often. There isn't a lot of variation there. Really, they offer the feedback to the player and that's pretty much it. It's a slight ringing sound when you hit characters no matter which enemy you do end up inflicting damage on. And while that can certainly feel lackluster, the weird death knell of mushrooms that have met their fungal demise at the dismal end of the character's sword are sort of funny, and I liked a lot of those. I just wish it was thicker in the sound effects, because especially when you look at the environmentals, there's a lot here that could be told just by simple environmental audio that isn't there a lot. Another thing that isn't there is a basic map. You don't have a map proper, and the game's quest can be anything from, let's say, two steps to eight or nine, and that can be hard to track as the game may have you looking for a specific creature, but because of the interpretation, it sometimes can be hard to remember where that character is or what part of the game world that they live in or how in the hell you got there in the first place. Also, you cannot spin the camera full 360. You can slightly turn it right and left, which also means that many of the locations are a little bit hard to parse or explore. You might find a location with a little out of the way pocket with something that you may need or even a quest moment that you have to grab onto. Here's the problem. I love the graphics. I like the different ways in which it's all presented, but it's very hard to parse the backgrounds more than I would have liked, especially to find special characters. It gets that feeling of older point and click games where you would have to go around and sort of click on everything in the game world to find out what is there because the characters here do not pop out of the game worlds as much as I would like. Instead, they just slightly lean out and hints that there might be more exploration. And that is a kudo to Ravenlock in its world, but not so much in its interaction. This is Alice in Wonderland with a sword, and Riverbond, Planet of the Eyes, and Echo Generation have shown that they know how to make games. Many of those have supremely high review scores. And so far, my impressions are pretty solid, except you do have to understand where this game is skewing, which is fine to me. I like titles like this, and I like to explore them to see what younger people are going to see when they want to jump into games for the first time. For a parent looking at a title like this, this might be a perfect title to get them into it. Or for somebody who does like those laid-back zen moments, definitely something here for you as well. So far, I have enjoyed the game, but there have been a couple of those issues that I talked about before. And as always, I'll continue to update this. I'll put something in the podcast so we can talk about what I've thought overall. If I end up beating it, you could definitely jump into. You just have to understand the caveats. Now, more game reviews and previews are coming your way if you subscribe, including Jedi Survivor, if I can get it to not corrupt my save game Again, not only that, we have some stuff on Zelda, the best gaming podcast on Friday. We're going to sit down and discuss Jedi, Redfall, Zelda's leak, and a ton more. Check it out on Spotify as the best gaming podcast. Jump into the patron. It helps the channel. Or, you know what? Just thumbs this up. But regardless, enjoy your gaming. Peace out.